Last month, I finished my first year at the world-renowned Juilliard School of Music. In truth, it's far from the perfect school pop culture has romanticized it into, but it's not the evil institution that recent events have made it out to be. So to clear all this up, here's a completely unbiased list of the major pros and cons about attending Juilliard, and at the end of the video, I'll answer the question, is Juilliard worth it? Pro number one, most of the teachers are legitimately amazing. Private teachers are one of the most important factors in your college experience, and most students who go to Juilliard go there to study with a specific teacher. Teachers are attracted to schools by factors like salary, location, and opportunities. Juilliard has all three of those things and in big amounts, and so a lot of excellent teachers end up teaching there. And with so many good teachers, we get pro number two, good students. Another major part of your experience at music school is the quality of the players in your chamber groups and orchestra, who you will work with and be inspired by on a daily basis. With a 6% acceptance rate, Juilliard is extremely selective about their students and you can be guaranteed to be surrounded by great musicians as you spend your time there. This is also important because if you play your cards right in school, you get pro number 3, having a great network of contacts by the time you graduate. Having contacts is the best way to get gigs and even jobs, especially in pro number 4, Juilliard's location in New York City which is stacked with gigging opportunities for musicians. It's one of the busiest places for classical music in America, especially surrounding Juilliard's campus on Lincoln Center. It's right next to the world-famous New York Philharmonic, Metropolitan Opera, and Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center at Alice Tilly Hall. Not to mention you can also get to Carnegie Hall via a short ride on the subway. All this is even better with pro number 5, you can get discounted or free tickets to all these world-class performance venues because you go to Juilliard. But the location is double-edged sword and that brings us to con number 1. Being in a wealthy part of Manhattan means you have to pay a ton of money to go to school there, and it keeps getting higher. Thankfully though, they do give out a lot of money to students, which leads me to pro number 6. Their massive endowments of $1.1 billion. Because of this, you can get a lot of grants, scholarships, and work-study opportunities. You can make a ton of money just by subbing for the pre-college orchestra, or playing a piece by a Juilliard composer. However, the only way they get that absolute unit of an endowment is through donations, and that's why we get our con number two, which is that the Juilliard administration is obsessed with public relations. They want people to think they really are that magical place pop culture thinks they are, and you can see this in the superfluous wording they use in official documents and letters, such as their mission statements. This doesn't usually affect the students, but whenever they have any kind of scandal, they relentlessly try to cover it up or smooth it over. This ended up backfiring on them in last month's tuition freeze protests, which leads me to con number three. They're generally pretty strict about the code of conduct, and this is because of their public relations obsession combined with the fact that they have so few students that they can easily keep track of everybody. If you don't do anything risky, this doesn't matter and you'll probably be fine, but it does matter in cases such as a group of protesters getting stripped of diamond building privileges because one of them might have knocked on a door. Going back to the budget, it's also kind of suspicious that the former president took a half a million dollar bonus when Juilliard is considered a not-for-profit institution. And so I'm just going to call that con number four, questionable use of budget. The final pro is pro number seven, and that's culture. Juilliard is rumored to have some kind of cutthroat culture, and while that may have been the case 20 years ago, in my experience all the teachers and students are all very encouraging and supportive. Everyone there is super passionate about what they do, and while there is some competitiveness, no one actually takes it too far. And our final con, con number 5, is the residence hall. The rooms are fine, aside from the cockroach I found in the bathroom on my first day and some rusty shower curtain rings, but the food was really bad this year. As the kind of person who will usually just eat anything and not complain about it, I didn't enjoy the majority of my meals there, and I usually had stomach aches. By the end of the year, I was mainly eating fruit and yogurt. But to be fair, they did have limited options this year because of the pandemic, so hopefully it'll be better next year. Before I give my final answer to the question, is Juilliard worth it, I need to debunk two rumors. First, there's literally nothing wrong with the practice rooms. Sometimes you'll get a wobbly stand and you have to get a new one, but the practice rooms function and you won't find anything to complain about unless you're actively looking for it. I also want to address the whole Juilliard effect issue, which is based on a New York Times article from 2004 saying that 10 years after graduation, only half the students they found were still doing music. I'm not going to say this is false, but it's not specific to Juilliard. Music is an extremely difficult career and you need to have great work ethic, intelligence, and luck on your side in order to make a living out of it. Compared to music schools everywhere, 50% success is relatively a very high number. And finally, my answer to the big question, is Juilliard actually worth it? Juilliard isn't the magical, idealistic place it's made out to be in pop culture, but it is a great place for young musicians that sets you up for a successful career if you can take advantage of it. It would be nice if it cost less, but at the same time it's actually cheaper than most other American music conservatories. 
Yes, you heard that right. Counting just room and board plus tuition for all the conservatories I applied to a year and a half ago, here are the numbers. Juilliard add about 70,000, New England add a little bit more than that, Eastman add almost 76,000, and Oberlin add 77,000. You could bring up Curtis and Colburn, but those are special cases because they only take one or two students per instrument each year. Juilliard gives a full scholarship to about that same amount of students, plus they take five times as many students. So yes, it's expensive, but that's not an issue that's specific to Juilliard. As I said earlier, they do give decent scholarships, and you probably have more opportunities to make money there than you do at any other music school. Overall, in my opinion, Juilliard is absolutely worth it, and I'm excited for my next three years there. And that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anything else you want to know about Juilliard, like a random detail, feel free to ask me in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and till next time, Viola Gang, Viola King out.